Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to R.I. Fagonal Hall on the campus of Elmhurst College. I'm Tim Calderwood. It's time for another presentation of Elmhurst College Athletics here on Blue Jay TV. Tonight, women's basketball, Elmhurst and Milliken. A new twist to the CCIW scheduling for this 2013 campaign. On Wednesday nights, the men and women will be playing the same team at opposite sites. So down in Decatur, Elmhurst and Milliken are battling in men's basketball. Fiona McMahon is in the center circle for Elmhurst. She is joined by Alyssa Saklak. And it's Elmhurst with possession to begin the basketball game. Elmhurst in the navy blue unis. Blue Jays entering the contest 7-6, and 1-1 one and one in the CCIW. Coming off of a difficult loss at Illinois Wesleyan University on Saturday in which they were limited to a season low 51 points. Devin Vaughn out of control, travels. Fiona McMahon, Devin Vaughn, Tess Godhart, Karen Sinet, and Claire Monroe. The starting five for Elmhurst as the Blue Jays apply some pressure to Milliken here to start. Milliken and the standard blue unis. Bria Williams, Brittany Saplicki, Alyssa Saklak, Molly Koppel, and Holly Haskins. The starting five for the big blue. Saklak surrounded towards the rack, no good. Nobody blocking out on the weak side, though. A rebound for Bria Williams denied. And now a jump ball allows the arrow to stay with the big blue. Was chatting with Elmhurst head coach Tethany Carrillo before the matchup today. She said Milliken is going to be very physical inside. They're not the biggest post players, but they work hard and aggressive and are going to present an interesting challenge for Fiona McMahon inside for the Blue Jays who is averaging a double-double this year. Williams underneath McMahon, lost it, recovers, off the glass short. McMahon swats the rebound out of bounds. It'll stay with Milliken. 15 on the shot clock for the Big Blue, who are 5-7 and seven this year and 0-2 oh and in the CCIW. Past couple of seasons, Elmhurst and Milliken have consistently been battling for that fourth and final slot in the CCIW tournament. Last year, Milliken won a tiebreaker over Elmhurst. Good ball movement leads to an easy layup from Sacklick low left. Freshman out of Schaumburg, Illinois. Milliken has lost three in a row. Lost at North Park on Saturday, 62-54. Trailed by as many as 15 in the second half. Turnover allows the Big Blue to move up the floor. One minute and change into this matchup. To Clack posting up underneath against McMahon. Godhart comes in to help. Up and under move and before to travel. Fifty seventh meeting all time between Milliken and Elmhurst in women's basketball today. Milliken dominating the series forty five to eleven. The last six contests have been split even three apiece. Nice ball fake for Karen Sinet. Works her way into the elbow and connects to tie the score. Lots of other games around the CCIW today. Conference action heating up. Augustana at North Central. Milliken at Wheaton. Actually, that's looking ahead to Saturday. My fault. Tonight. It's Illinois Wesleyan at North Park, Milliken at Elmhurst, Carthage at North Central, and Wheaton at Augustana. Those are the games this evening. 4-2 Milliken on top. Monroe lost the basketball. Coming away with it is Koppel playing give and go with Williams and scoring. Strong start for the Big Blue on the road. Already a substitution to the table for Elmhurst. 17-20 to play first half. CCIW standings currently. A couple surprises at the top. Wheaton 2-0, North Park 2-0, Carthage 2-0 as well. Wheaton, I think, was expected to take a step forward this year. Godhart to the rack, contacted. Illinois Wesley and Elmhurst even at 1-1. One one. North Central, Milliken, Augustana all winless at 0-2. Of course, Illinois Wesleyan has kind of been the standard bearer for the CCIW in women's basketball of late defending national champions. But just 8-5 on the season so far. However, never an easy out. Tess Godhart to the free throw line. Converts. Uh -huh. 
Elmhurst collectively 71% from the free throw line. Godhart at 80%. Ranks second on the squad in that department. Two point game. Saplicki brings it up the floor. Kim Schwartman has entered for Elmhurst. Strong move for Williams in the lane, but a walk. Couple all over Schwartman defensively. Sinet will trigger the three. Caught iron. Fiona McMahon, an offensive rebound. Godhart is all alone underneath and scores. All square at six apiece. Williams up and under against McMahon, no good. Fiona McMahon, over 10 rebounds a game. Here's Godhart again in transition. Makes it look easy. Devin Vaughn is pumped up. And a timeout for Milliken. It's a full one, and we will break as well. Four minutes gone in the first. Elmhurst, eight, Milliken, six. A 6-0 run for the Blue Jays on Blue Jay TV. Three consecutive baskets for Elmhurst, a lot of which have come very easily in the transition game. Thus prompting the quick timeout for Milliken and a full one at that for Lori Kearns and company. Home run ball to a wide open Saplicki who has an easy finish. All even at eight apiece. Saplicki at 9.2 per contest. Second to Bria Williams on this Milliken squad. And a turnover for the Blue Jays. Saplicki tries to skip it into the post and it's kicked. Shot clock will hold at 20. In the lane, it's Williams to score. Fiona McMahon is no longer on the floor for Elmhurst. Stephanie Mitchell has taken her place. Mitchell, Schwartman, Godhart, Sinet, and Vaughn, the five for Elmhurst. And Schwartman stepped out of bounds. McMahon returns. Behind her is Courtney Spencer. I think a lot of times you look at this Elmhurst team and forget just how young of a squad it can be. Just two seniors for the Blue Jays this year, Kim Schwartman and Stephanie Mitchell, both of whom are on the floor presently. McMahon with inside position, takes it away from Saklak. Schwartman on the baseline, partially blocked. Fiona McMahon controls underneath, angling along the baseline, retains with 15 to work with. Elmhurst trying to tie the contest here. Out of the reach of McMahon. A big target at six foot one. But Milliken will be aggressive inside with McMahon as well. And kind of pack it in a little bit, almost allowing perimeter attacks. Oh. 
Williams at the elbow, fakes a couple of handoffs. Now works it towards Haskins, who walked. Mitchell between the rings. Milliken continues the lead by two. Spencer to the corner, picks it up. Ten to work with, Schwartman underneath. Good finish. A lot of strong cuts to the basket for Elmhurst here early in the first half. Tied up at ten apiece. Saplicki will shoot and connects. A junior out of Bourbon A, Illinois, Brittany Saplicki for Milliken. Seven points early on. More than half of the 13 on the board for the Big Blue. And a whistle away from the basketball. Koppel holds up the Blue Jays down below. Off the bench, Olya Cholowick. Mitchell draws a crowd, throws it away, and then in frustration, runs into Saplicki. First foul on Elmhurst. Pretty clean first half so far, just three total fouls. Enter Nikki Tipsord, a senior for Milliken. Big blue light on the seniors as well. Tip Sword and Brittany Gallivan are the only seniors for the Big Blue. Here's Godhart back for Elmhurst. 13-22 first half. 13-10 Milliken looking to build on the lead. Williams to drive, swatted by McMahon. Talked about Fiona McMahon's offense and a rebounding as well. Fiona McMahon can get those arms up on defense and knock some shots as well. Here's McMahon on the offensive act. Fiona McMahon netted 36 points last week in a win over North Central. Saw right here on Blue Jay TV. 36 points and 16 rebounds. The fifth highest single game point total. 15 field goals in the contest was just one off of the single game record set by three separate Elmhurst players, which is 16. Second chance coming for Milliken, but no reset on the shot clock. Inside of 10, knocked away from Tipsword. Seven to work with for the Big Blue. Haskins inbounding. And Schwartman steps in front for the steal. Now it's Schwartman off to the races with the left hand to the rack. Layup no good. Godhart to her knees, clears it out, and a second chance coming for Elmhurst. Schwartman tried to outrace three Milliken defenders. Godhart off the side of the backboard. Cholowick responds in transition for the Big Blue. Cholowick out of LaGrange, Illinois. Sinet for three. Yes. Tying the ball game at 15 apiece. Karen Sinet with the first three-pointer today for Elmhurst. And an air ball, way too much on it from Haskins. Sinet with the board underneath as well. Strong shooting performances from each side so far, both near 60% to begin the contest. McMahon screens for Sinet, screen and roll to the rack, and a couple of bodies collide with McMahon in the post. Fouls on Brittany Saplicki, that's her first. Team's third. Off the bench for Elmhurst, Katie Swanson, Devin Vaughn. Yeah. 
knocked away. Returning is Koppel for Milliken. Godhart outside the lane. Overshot McMahon, but on the scene was Swanson to help out. Here's Vaughn down Main Street. Up against that tight, locked-in zone for Milliken. Godhart is fouled. Molly Koppel's second foul. Elmhurst looking for the lead. Vaughn having some problems. Hurries it into Spencer. Godhart free throw line extended. Nope. McMahon kept the rebound alive momentarily, but it's chased down in the corner by Cholowick. Now Milliken will slow it up. Koppel in the lane. It's the Clack who scores. Closing in on the midway point of the half. 17-15 Milliken with the advantage. Here's McMahon off the window and in. I asked Tete Carrillo before the contest today if she kind of saw this year coming from Fiona McMahon. Said she's always been one of the hardest workers on this team. Spent some time in the summer working with her brother who was a soccer player here at Elmhurst. And it's helped her immensely. Had to be careful defensively there and Saklak's able to score. Nine thirty-seven in the half. Milliken up two. Here's Godhart around Saplicki, but a travel. Three fresh ones for the Blue Jays for the first time off the bench. It's Nikki Moan. Stephanie Mitchell is back along with Kim Schwartman. Nine thirty-two to play. Schwartman aggressive, knocked it out of play. Home run ball again, this time defended perfectly by the Blue Jays. Nikki Moan comes up with the steal. Swanson underneath, shovels to Moan, baseline left, well long, and out of bounds. Last touch by Milliken apparently with 19 to work with on the shot clock. Vaughn looking to inbound. Has to hurry. Schwartman starts to move. Draws a crowd. And it's knocked out of there by Tip Sword. Cholowicz three-pointer no good. And Schwartman lets it ride into the bench. 8.59 in the half. Vaughn for three, in and out. Offensive rebound for Schwartman, scored in a foul. Boy, Kim Schwartman has returned from injury for the Blue Jays, and she's provided the kind of senior leadership that Elmhurst has needed this year. As we mentioned, one of only two seniors, Stephanie Mitchell the other. The Wheaton, Illinois product, stepping to the free throw line, looking to finish off this three-point play. 7 of 11 from there this year, and no good. Haskins collects for Milliken. All square at 19 apiece, and Splicky tripped up. 
Charge it to Schwartman. Timeout Elmhurst. Full timeout. We'll step aside with 8.40 to play. All tied up at 19 apiece on Blue Jay TV. Peek in on some of the other scores around the CCIW tonight. North Park unblemished at 2-0, leading at home over Illinois Wesleyan. 21-17 inside of seven minutes to play in the first half there. Other score, Wheaton up by 10 in its contest today. That's in men's basketball, though. Their foul is called. To the free throw line steps Molly Koppel, the sophomore from El Paso, Illinois. Second free throw, no good. Nikki Moan with the board. One point edge for Milliken. Devin Vaughn on the move, isolated on the wing. Backs it up, shot clock is down to 10. Vaughn, one dribble to her right, up high to Moan. Into the teeth of the zone, travels. Score down at Augustana shows Augustana 25 and Wheaton 11. That's a surprise early on. Moan to the rack. No good. Second chance coming. Follows up. Never give up. It's a Tim Allen movie that I loved. Galaxy Quest it was called. Where they had aliens from another planet. Never give up. Never surrender. That was their thought processes. Seven twenty-eight left in the half. Sinet curls, skips it beyond Devin Vaughn, but it's off the paw of Williams. Shot clock half gone for Elmhurst. Moan underneath, strong to the glass. Nikki Moan with a big performance off the bench for the Blue Jays. Who were up three prior to the take from Saplicki. Aggressive with the ball in her hands. Inside of seven minutes to play in the half. One point Elmhurst lead. Moen will drive again. Flips to Schwartman in the corner for three. No good. Schwartman follows the shot. Has an offensive rebound. 
Been a big advantage for the Blue Jays here in the first half in that department. Olya Cholowick returns. Devin Vaughn, out of control, saves it. Sinet has it poked free. Ball is loose on the ground. We've got a jump ball. Arrow stays with Elmhurst, 14 on the shot clock. Fiona McMahon, Tess Godhart return for Elmhurst. Also back is Claire Monroe. Nikki Moan departs following a successful tenure on the floor. Three-pointer coming from Monroe up over the top of the backboard. Six eighteen to go. Milliken looking for the lead. It's been a back and forth first half. Tip sword, no good. And a travel on the rebound for Williams who was surrounded. Really left with no choice. Don't forget ElmhurstBlueJays.com is the official athletic website of Elmhurst College Athletics. ElmhurstBlueJays.com. You can also follow Elmhurst on Twitter and become a fan on Facebook for all the updates from the land of Blue Jay Athletics. Down to 10. McMahon has it knocked away. And now Cholowick lost it and Schwartman becomes friends with those congregated in the front row today. Milliken has traveled pretty well, although the Big Blue do have a contingency of Chicagoland players as well. A couple of Schaumburg products, a LaGrange product, Matson in the south suburbs, Naperville as well. Nearing five minutes to play in the half. That's taken away from Monroe. Elmhurst never gives up aggressive. Ball is loose. Call for a jump ball, and it is Milliken basketball. Courtney Spencer returns. Five oh three to play. Some conversation amongst the officials here. I think they just wanted to make sure the arrow was correct at the scorer's table. We'll take some time off the shot clock as well. That was what the discussion was. Fourth foul against Elmhurst. It's the second on Schwartman with a reach. Holly Haskins will inbound. Williams dumping off. Hook shot coming from Saklak. And Fiona McMahon wrestles away the rebound from three Milliken defenders. McMahon heading the other way for free throws.
What a year so far for McMahon. Only Elmhurst player to reach in double figures in Saturday's loss to Illinois Wesleyan. 17 points, 12 rebounds as well. Another double-double for McMahon. Elmhurst turned the ball over 32 times on Saturday, resulting in 26 easy points for the Illinois Wesleyan squad. And a 30-second timeout for Milliken. We'll keep it here during this one. Illinois Wesleyan has taken the lead over North Park. It's 28-27 with 3.46 to play in the first half. And Augustana up 20 at home over Wheaton, 33-13. That's easily the most surprising score of the contest so far tonight. Four forty-one to play here. Fiona McMahon with five points for the Blue Jays. Relatively quiet first half for her. Also, though, with five rebounds, Elmhurst at forty-eight percent from the floor. Blue Jays have turned it over eleven times in the half, but are up five on the glass at fifteen to ten. A three would tie it. Saklak finishes from inside instead. Godhart down Main Street. Last second denied and yet again. Milliken basketball. Four oh five to play in the half. Big Blue looking for the lead. Back and forth first. Saplicki above her head. To Williams. Long two. Bank shot. <laughs> Milliken with the lead. 26-25. McMahon. Wide to Schwartman. Williams aimed for the steal. Godhart chases. Sinet will drive. Draws the crowd. Dumps it off to the wide open McMahon. Fiona McMahon has led Elmhurst in scoring five times this season, including the last two contests. And Saklak sensed the pressure coming. He's able to draw the contact underneath and will head to the free throw line. Tess Gardhart with the foul, her first. Free throw no good. For the season, Saklak at the stripe, 73%. Leads Milliken, who is 63% as a team. That'll even up the matchup, 27 apiece, with 3.05 to play in the first here at R.A. Fagenal Hall. And it'll airmail Karen Sinet. Saplicki all the way, runs into the wall of Fiona McMahon, but a second chance coming for Shelby Schmally underneath, but a walk. Nikki Moan, who was busy early on. 
Showing she has some ball handling skills. Swanson around a screen. Bounces to Sinet in the corner. Shot clock down to five. Moen four, three. It's long. Wrestling for the rebound is Saklak. Dribbling in and connecting Saplicki. Double digits in the first half for Milliken, who is up two with less than two minutes to play in the half. Ball is loose. Saplicki chases, and it's last touch by McMahon. Milliken basketball. Big Blue looking to finish with a flurry here in the first half. Cholowick overshoots it out of bounds. The officials will talk about this one. Shot clock is at 18 currently. Officials trying to see who had the better vantage point. Discussing which way the ball actually ends up. They may call a jump ball and they will, in which case it stays with Milliken. I think that was the right call anyhow. With 1.33 to play in the half. So Clack will put it on the deck and throw it away. Away comes Spencer. Targeting Moan who scores. Big first half for Nikki Moan off the bench for Elmhurst. All even at 29 apiece. Saklak, no good over the top of McMahon. And an injured Elmhurst player, that's Spencer. Tethany Carrillo along with the trainer out to take a look. Again, an update on some other scores. Now at halftime, it's 38-18, Augustana over Wheaton. Huge surprise there. Augustana winless, Wheaton unbeaten so far, and they have a huge mountain to climb on the road. Spencer up to her feet, favoring her right leg. Also at the half, North Park up four on Illinois Wesleyan, 34-30. One oh five to play. All even at 29 apiece. Godhart threw it away. Steal for Cholowick. Off to the races. Godhart the trailer. Cholowick scoops up and in. 31-29 Milliken. 14 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here in the first half. Moan inside the stripe, tied up. Quick whistle on the jump ball. Possession is with Elmhurst. 16 on the shot clock as Devin Vaughn emerges. Sinet picks up the dribble. Fiona McMahon wants the ball, and McMahon travels. So the shot clock is off. Milliken should head to the locker room with the lead. 
at the very least, a two-point margin. Could it be more? Williams at the free throw line, long. And a tussle on the rebound. Devin Vaughn is knocked to the floor. I think that was kind of a quick shot, not necessarily the best look for Bria Williams either. And it'll place Devin Vaughn at the free throw line for Elmhurst. Vaughn out of North Aurora. One and one, chance to tie, hits the first. And in and out, Williams the rebound. Milliken will sprint across, Saplicki pulls up, and no shot, heading into the locker room. It's Milliken 31, Elmhurst 30. 20 minutes complete here at R.A. Faginal Hall. We'll have the second half coming your way in a bit on Blue Jay TV.
It's halftime in Elmhurst. Tim Calderwood with you on Blue Jay TV. Elmhurst trailing Milliken 31-30 in a very exciting first half. Lots of back and forth action. Largest lead by either side was four. Milliken held a 6-2 advantage early on. Elmhurst's biggest lead was three. Nine ties, six lead changes in the first half. Let's check in on some of the other scores. At halftime, Carthage over North Central 45-37. Second half has begun down in Rock Island. Wheaton on an early run, but still down 16, 40, 24 to Augustana. And one other matchup to let you know about early in the second half as well. It's North Park 36, Illinois Wesleyan 34. That is in Chicago. And if you're wondering, perhaps men's action, well, the Elmhurst College men trailing 39, 32 down in Decatur to Milliken. So be ready for the second half here in Elmhurst. Women's basketball action. Run down some first half numbers for you momentarily. Milliken opens with possession. Big blue in the standard blue, traveling right to left. Devin Vaughn steps in front, quick steal for Elmhurst. Vaughn to the races, has it denied on a great defensive play coming in from Alyssa Saklak to deny. Elmhurst with 16 turnovers in the first half. Here's Godhart for the lead. The seventh lead change today. Leading scorer in the game is Brittany Saplicki with 11 for Milliken. Alyssa Saklak right behind her with 9. Elmhurst leading scorer, Fiona McMahon, 8 points, 6 rebounds in the first half. Talked a lot about Nikki Moe and her contribution. 6 points for Elmhurst off the bench. Tess Godhart with 6 as well. Here's Godhart chasing down the long rebound and controlling possession. Each team scored 10 points off of turnovers. Saklak with the rebound and a reach is called on Claire Monroe. Elmhurst shooting 50% on the first half, 12 of 24, but just one of six from three-point range. Both teams struggled from bonus distance. Milliken was just one of five. So we'll have to see what's in store here in the second half. Both teams, I know specifically, will probably be looking to work the ball inside a little more. A lot of the scoring has been in the paint in this matchup. 20 for Elmhurst, 18 for Milliken. Down to 10 for the Big Blue. Haskins locates Williams and a travel. Aaron Rickard underneath the basket signifies the travel. The officials, Doran Stewart, Aaron Rickard, and Marnie Fox. 18.40 to play. Monroe staying patient. Here's Vaughn for three. Good follow through, pretty finish. Second three-pointer for Elmhurst today, the first for Vaughn. A three-pointer earlier on was from Karen Sinet as well. Sinet out to challenge Molly Koppel, who will take the long J. Rebound was in and out of the hands of Haskins, who couldn't control. And becoming best friends with Joanna Connor in the bench is Koppel for Milliken. Connor now showing off her ability to avoid it. Elmhurst up four. Milliken yet to score in the first two minutes of the half. Blue Jays on a 5-0 run to start. McMahon wants the basketball, has it underneath, off the feed for Monroe to score. Will they count it? Looks like it. Godhart with the foul. Free throw for Saklak here. It's good. Patience, McMahon knifes towards the basket. Tapped away, back out it comes. Monroe steps back in the corner, three-pointer. Yeah. 
Elmhurst hit only one three in the first half. They've connected on a pair in the opening three minutes of the second. Here's Haskins with a response. Right back at you, 40-37. Sinet on the way to the free throw line. Priya Williams with the foul, her first. Elmhurst was five of seven in the first half at the free throw line. Toss is good. One more coming for Sinet, who transferred in this season after two seasons at Judson College. Anchorage, Alaska native. Stepped into the starting lineup for Elmhurst. That's a five-point game. Couple juggles. Looking into the post. Godhart, nice defense. Two on two. Godhart all the way. No. But two shots coming. Godhart looking to reach double figures tonight. At 12 and a half points per contest. The sophomore from Hinkley, Illinois. Bends at the knees and hits. Godhart won a couple of state championships in high school in Illinois Class 1A. Four-year varsity letter winner at Hinkley Big Rock. Second team All-State choice as a senior. But cannot connect on the second. It's a six-point lead for Elmhurst. That is the largest today. 43-37. I don't know what that was for Saklak, but uh, bailout whistle as Godhart commits her third foul. With 16-10 to play. Freshman heading to the free throw line for Milliken. Connects. Elmhurst is back at home on Saturday. Big one against North Park. As we mentioned, is locked in a back-and-forth battle right now with Illinois Wesleyan University. And the Blue Jays will have back-to-back -back contests on the road next week. Wednesday at Carthage. Saturday at Augustana. Big blue within four. Nikki Moen has entered, six first half points. Wrap around pass towards Vaughn. Driving baseline. Skips it to an open McMahon who hits the short five footer in the lane. 12 points for McMahon. And a block as well. For the season, McMahon owns 31 blocks. Two and a half a contest. Elmhurst with 53 total. So McMahon with more than half of the total. Bria Williams trying to back in against McMahon and walked. Forced to think a little too much. Fiona McMahon has that effect, I'm sure, in the post on a lot of players. Fifteen twenty left. Elmhurst looking for its largest lead today. A whistle though away from the basketball and McMahon charged with an offensive foul underneath the bucket. Off the bench comes Nikki Tipsword. Haskins underneath 
Tip sword back out to Haskins. Jump stop denied by Schwartman. Down to 10. In the lane, Tip sword twists it around towards Saklak who converts. Forty-five, forty-one, with fourteen forty left. And a block is called. Nikki Moan collides with Saplicki. But it was Saplicki who never set, thus leading to the whistle with fourteen and a half to play. Moan bounces for Schwartman right down Main Street. Lost it off her knee. Fourteen twenty-seven left. Elmer is supplying a little bit of pressure here. Olya Chilowick. targets Tip Sword backing up against McMahon. Kind of left a little bit of a cushion there. Tip Sword tried to take advantage, but left her jumper short. And a turnover. It's Cholowick. Schwartman into challenge to the corner for Cholowick. And back around we go. Nice move. Saklak strong and scoring. Forcing McMahon to commit. We've got a timeout. 13.50 to play in the contest. Timeout on the floor, 45-43 is the score. It's a full one, and we will step aside on Blue Jay TV. Forty-five, forty-three. Elmhurst up just two at R.A. Fagenal Hall. Tim Calderwood with you on Blue Jay TV. Elsewhere, Carthage 52, North Central 46. That's early in the second half. Wheaton is closed to within 13 at Augustana. 43-30 the count there. Wheaton was down 20 at the break, 38-18. Hit only five shots in the first half. They've hit five in the first seven plus minutes of the second. Meanwhile, North Park leads by seven at home over Illinois Wesleyan. 46-39, a steal for Milliken and a finish for Haskins. All even, 45 apiece. Elmhurst has led by as many as six here in the second half. Godhart is all alone. Wasn't ready for the pass though. Some good arms in the passing lane and Nikki Moen able to convert. It was dinged around off the paws of Tip Sword. It's 47-45. Elmhurst in the man. Saplicki takes. Pulls up. Swish. Tied up again. 47-47. Nikki Moen at the center stripe, able to save the possession, but needs some help. Saplicki stepped in, read it perfectly, 15 to work with. Elmhurst retains possession, it's knocked away again. Down to 10 for Godhart. All over her defensively is Haskins. Here's Moen, looking for the open Schwartman, jumper, good. Yeah. 49-47, Elmhurst back in front.
Williams rotating left. Cholowick tried to wrap one around. Nikki Moen, Lucia Williams aggressively dives towards the ground, knocks it off of Sinet, maybe. And no, they'll say it is Elmhurst basketball. Lori Kearns was right there trying to plead their case. Producer director Phil certainly thought so. He has a tendency to become a cheerleader from time to time. We've got cameraman Glenn and producer director Phil today. I want to let you know you can go back and watch any broadcast throughout the course of the season. It is all available for you on demand. Through the Blue Jay TV website, you can also find it on YouTube. Inside a 10 to work with, Spencer to the free throw line. Met by Williams, down to three. Godhart has to hurry, swatted around on the floor. Shot clock violation. Big Blue will have an opportunity to tie here. Haskins on the take. Front iron, Williams tried to one arm the board. Tapped it to Swanson. Milliken packing in that defense. Down to five, Vaughn with a jump stop in the lane, finishes. Four point Elmhurst advantage, 51-47. Plenty of time left. Tight contest throughout tonight. Saplinski connects on the baseline from 16. Two point game again as we close in on the midway point of the half. Spencer to the free throw line, has it poked free, out of bounds. Shot clock is at 11, it'll stay with Elmhurst. Subs for the big blue. Molly Koppel returns. Right behind her is Nikki Tipsword. Fiona McMahon, Kim Schwartman, Karen Sinet back for Elmhurst. Also in is Shelby Schmalley. Shot clock down to five. Above the head of McMahon, does Elmhurst know it? Godhart has to hurry to beat the buzzer, does. Nine forty to play. Saklak is contacted. Saklak hits. Looking to bring the blue, big blue within a pair. The left-handed finish is good. A little pump of the fist for good measure. Two-point Elmhurst lead. Swanson with Koppel on her defensively, all over in fact. Koppel steps in to help and a little bit of a hip check on Godhart. Four, 
Brittany Saplicki enters. Schwartman with her back to the bucket. Clears it out. Here's Fiona McMahon. Tripped up. And McMahon is on the ground in a heap. Trainer Matt Pasolacqua is yet to be waved onto the floor. McMahon favoring her left leg. Will hobble off. And now Pasolacqua will come greet her. Elmhurst timeout, perhaps to allow McMahon a few moments here. Looks like she'll get that ankle treated. Full timeout with 8.59 to play, and we'll step aside. It's 55-51, Elmhurst on top on Blue Jay TV. Just 8.59 to play. Elmhurst up four, 55-51 in a tight matchup here today. Milliken's been involved in a lot of these games throughout the course of the season. Averaging just 56 points per ball game. The Big Blue are at their best when they're able to keep those contests in the upper 50s, low 60s. Another look at what else is happening around the CCIW. Fifty-nine, fifty-five. Carthage leading North Central in women's action. Wheaton is coming back in the second half, but is there enough time with just 7.14 to play? The Thunder are down 10 at Augustana, 49-39. And Illinois Wesleyan and North Park all square, 46 apiece. Nikki Moan is posting. McMahon, by the way, still receiving attention behind the Elmhurst bench. Godhart cuts to the basket and travels. Holly Haskins returning. 8.33 to play. Rebound is loose and settled down by Schwartman. Sinet with a head and shoulder fake, takes to the basket and connects. Good move by Sinet. a clack over the top of Godhart who is frustrated. That'll be the fourth foul on Godhart with 7.46 to play. We'll likely see her headed to the bench for a little while. Six point lead for Elmhurst matching its largest today. Yeah, and the free throw is good.
second is just like the first. Seven thirty-five. Swanson starts to move. Looking for help. Elmhurst has three timeouts remaining. Milliken four. Here's Schwartman right around her defender. No good. But kept it alive long enough to secure the rebound. And nobody boxed out for Milliken. It's been a frustrating day for the Big Blue on the glass. Elmhurst with a 24-17 edge on the glass presently. Blue Jays will huddle briefly. They were thinking about potentially shooting here. But it is only the fifth foul against Milliken, the second charge to Chilowick. And a whistle. Devin Vaughn was moving her feet. Unable to move along the baseline. It's different based off of makes and misses, timeouts, whatnot, whether you can move along that baseline. Devin Vaughn, just the slight shuffle of her feet, kind of laterally moved. And it's a turnover to the Big Blue. Big possession. Haskins able to save in front of the bench. Copple to the hole, no good. Nikki Moan volleyballs the rebound out and ahead. Here is Spencer off of the races. Spencer has it denied. And there's a whistle, it's an offensive foul. Third foul on Kim Schwartman. And out of bounds, it'll stay with Milliken. Six forty-eight to play. Haskins for three. Tried to chase down the rebound, but Sinet had position. Swanson's J is short, rebound is loose. And away with it comes Milliken. Saplicki, baseline, short. Rebound, Sinet. Taking all the way. Moan with a shot clock half gone. Three pointer from Shortman is long. Copple the board. And a blown layup. Timeout Elmhurst with 540 to play in the ball game. 57-53 is the score. It's a 30-second timeout. We will keep it here during the stoppage. Again, checking up on the other ball games. Now with 4.06 to play. Wheaton is close to within seven at 51-44. Illinois Wesleyan leading North Park by one. 49-48 with 4.58 to play. And it's Carthage 64, North Central 60 in the second half over in Naperville. Here it's Elmhurst 57-53. The Blue Jays came out strong, five consecutive points to open the second half. They've led pretty much ever since, but it has been a tight contest.
In the corner, Sinet for three and a foul to go with. A chance for the rare four point play. Foul is on Holly Haskins, her second. Sedet's free throw, perfect. Fiona McMahon, by the way, has returned. Looks like that left ankle is taped up a bit. Ball is on the deck, jump ball to Elmhurst. Eight point lead is the largest for the Blue Jays today. And an opportunity for Elmhurst to potentially stretch it to double figures here with time winding down in the matchup. And a whistle. It'll be free throws either way. Question is one or two coming for Elmhurst. Schwartman is at the line. It was one and one, and it was well short. Tip sword and a kick. Five oh six to play, eight point Elmhurst edge. Devin Vaughn read it all the way. Lifted it up into the third row here at R.A. Fagano Hall. See some of the Blue Jay backers are in the vicinity there. That's their usual locale. Looping three-pointer from Koppel well off the mark. An air ball and Devin Vaughn on the weak side of the floor will take her time. And McMahon is obstructed. Third foul on Haskins. Fiona McMahon is shooting. No good, long. Elmhurst needs to make free throws down the stretch here inside of five minutes. Cholowick dribbles around her own teammate. Spotting up all alone. Saplicki three-pointer punched out of bounds to Elmhurst. Devin Vaughn nearly throws it away. Milliken trapping and teammates colliding. Fiona McMahon. Back around we go. Tethany Carrillo was telling me today that they almost feel like they need to get more shots for Fiona McMahon with as strong as she has been from the floor. Ball is loose. And I believe it's a jump ball, in which case it'll be Milliken's possession. And yes, they are signaling to the big blue. Today, McMahon is a perfect six of six from the field. Was seven of nine against Illinois Wesleyan on Saturday. And as I mentioned earlier, in the CCIW opener against North Central, converted on 15 field goals. For the season, McMahon is at 61% from the floor. Another double-figure performance today. 
Holly Haskins is the injured Milliken player. 2.37 to play, Illinois Wesleyan 54, North Park 50. Just over a minute left down in Rock Island, Augustana by 6, 55-49 over Wheaton. And again, it was a 20-point game at the half. The Thunder have come all the way back in the second, but may have built themselves a little bit too deep of a hole. And Carthage looking to finish off North Central 70-63. It's actually a low-scoring game, of course, given the system that North Central runs. 4.05 remaining here. Teams have gathered, and we'll step aside. With 4.05 to play on Blue Jay TV. So an injury timeout as Holly Haskins is helped off of the floor, but the good news is under her own power. Lori Kearns is right there to check on Haskins. Milliken will have the basketball with 4.05 remaining. 
<laughs> Lori Karen's racing out in front of the Elmhurst bench to try and make her way back to the Milliken sideline. 61-53 is the count. Saplicki retreats high to Williams, targeting the wide open Saklak, who's able to score. 61-55 with 3.45 left. Still a lot of basketball, especially when you do this. A turnover, Williams with the steal. And Saplicki will run the offense. The clack is surrounded, still able to try and scoop and score. Devin Vaughn falls to the floor, but pokes the rebound towards Sinet with 3.10 left. Vaughn contacted. And that'll mean free throws for Devin Vaughn. Foul is the third on Olya Cholowick. No good. And too long. Hello, doors. There's still 2.53 before you need to make your way to the exits, ma'am. Maybe she was trying to get some concessions. 61-55, the trap for the big blue. Elmhurst makes it look easy. Shot clock down to 10. Sinet with the ball in the right hand, crosses over to the left. Bounces towards McMahon, it's loose on the floor. Jump ball called with the shot clock down to three. 2.25 to play. Godhart, well long, shot clock violation, never hit any rim. Interesting developments across the CCIW today. Not just in women's basketball, but in men's basketball, where number one ranked North Central is losing inside of a minute. Saplicki taking time here, down six. Saklak drives, scoops, no good. Williams is underneath with a board. Now Williams over the top of McMahon, no good. Nobody came to help, and so Williams tried to take matters into her own hands. Less than two minutes left. 61-55, Elmhurst will continue to run some clock here. August Santa has upset Wheaton on the women's side, final of 60-53. to So just too deep of a hole for Wheaton to climb out of from the start today, down 20 at the break. Outscored Augie by 13 in the second half, but still lost 60-53. First CCIW win for Augustana this year. Tess Godhart to the free throw line, converts. 12 points for Godhart, one of three Elmhurst players in double figures. McMahon with 14, Sedet with 13, Godhart with a dozen. And make it 13, timeout Milliken, a full one. Also can let you know it's final now in Chicago. Illinois Wesleyan 61, North Park 54. 138 to play here in Elmhurst. We'll break the conclusion in moments on Blue Jay TV.
So around the CCIW today, Illinois Wesleyan over North Park, 61-54. Augustana upsetting Wheaton at home. The time winding down in Naperville. North Central and Carthage still battling. Here it's eight-point lead for Elmhurst, 63-55. I'm Tim Calderwood with you on Blue Jay TV tonight. Doubleheader coming Saturday. We'll have video for you at the very least. I have other duties, won't be behind the microphone. Games are at two and four against North Park on Saturday with the women and the men. Two free throws for Siklak at the line. Big day for her, 24 points and adding to it. Really almost a two player show for Milliken, 40 of the 56 coming combined between Siklak and also Saplicki. Both free throws are perfect. Six point game with 126 left. Here comes the trap for the big blue. Sinet into a trouble spot, calling for a timeout and has it with 120 to play. Do not want to dribble into the corners. Elmhurst down to just one timeout remaining. This is a 30 second stoppage, we'll keep it here. Looking at the numbers for the matchup tonight. Elmhurst shooting 59% from the floor. Impressive number. Consider the fact as well that before the contest, Tethy Carrillo was telling me they needed to attack inside. Well, that they've done. Only four three-pointers made in the game and just 10 total attempts. Still probably would like to see some more from Fiona McMahon, but... Tethany Carrillo also told me this was going to be her toughest matchup inside of the season to this point. Six of six from the floor, 14 points, seven rebounds for McMahon tonight. 24 to work with on the shot clock for Elmhurst who will inbound it at the timeout. And stepping out of bounds is Fiona McMahon who's again favoring that left leg. A big turnover with a buck 19 to play. Off the bench comes Godhart likely to Step in for some defensive help here. She'll take the place of Spencer. Twisting in the lane. Scoop shot is off the window and through. 63-59. Elmhurst gunning for the steal. It's knocked out of bounds. Oh, get a little too complacent against that pressing trap. Godhart has to hurry. Into Sinet, surrounded. Ball is loose and out of bounds to Elmhurst. Don't know why Saklak decided to reach out for that one. It was headed for the front row and likely would have been a turnover. One minute left. Sinet with the shot clock down to 10. Sinet dribbles in. The 18-footer is good to beat the shot clock. And a big, big basket. Clock was still running. They'll put three back on the board. Wanted to be at 46 seconds. Lori Kearns was stomping her feet on the Milliken bench. Trying to point it out immediately. Six point margin for Elmhurst. Around the arc we go. Koppel to the lane, knocked around. Saplicki has it blocked by McMahon. Sinet with the rebound and a foul. Shot clock is off the rest of the way.
timeout. Milliken, 29 and 8 tenths to play. We'll break 65-59 Elmhurst on Blue Jay TV. Free throws coming for Elmhurst. Looking to put away Milliken in this CCIW matchup tonight. It would hand Elmhurst victory number two on the season in conference play. While dropping Milliken to 0-3, which could be a very difficult hole to overcome. Big Blues so far this season have lost to Carthage and North Park. Second free throw for Sinet is in, splitting the pair. Milliken down seven and in acceleration mode. Brittany Gallivan is in, too much time. Saplicki will pull up outside the lane, her eight footer is no good, rebound to Schwartman. Will Milliken foul? Looks like they'll trap, but no foul. We're down to seven seconds, and Elmhurst is going to improve to eight and six. Fiona McMahon is all alone underneath for a layup at the buzzer, which does indeed count. So our final score, Elmhurst 68, Milliken 59. Let's take a look at some of the final numbers from this one before we say so long. Elmhurst shot 58% from the floor in the matchup. Leading scorer, in this one was Karen Sinet and Fiona McMahon, both finishing with 16 points. As the Blue Jays are now 2-1 in the CCIW, defending their home floor here tonight. Again, doubleheader action coming Saturday against North Park. 2 o'clock women, 4 o'clock men. We'll have it for you here on Blue Jay TV. Elmer 68, Milliken 59, the final. Thanks for watching. For our entire crew, I'm Tim Calderwood. Have a good night.